Native people. Native culture. Native knowledge. Hi, I'm Jeannie Green, bringing you award-winning Heartbeat Alaska. Bringing you national and international Native news, this is award-winning Heartbeat Alaska, the premier Native voice in Native programming. There's a heartbeat, loud as thunder, revolution is in the air. Heartbeat Alaska, here's Jeannie Green. Hello everyone and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm your hostess Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining us. You know living up here in the north we're surrounded by such beauty, such grandeur and abundant wildlife. Well as we all know managing that wildlife is sometimes a hot topic. We look at managing wildlife, natives taking part in resource management through a video presented by the Native American Fish and Wildlife Society called Keepers of the Circle. I'll be back with Keepers of the Circle right after this. Heartbeat Alaska welcomes its new sponsors. Welcome the Council of Athabascan Tribal Governments, serving the Yukon Flats for 15 years. Help us welcome one of our new sponsors, Wave Wholesale Company, your one-stop supply source for village retail stores, food service customers, and government agencies. Welcome aboard, Wave. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Alaska Village Electrical Cooperative, turning the lights on in rural Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska thanks Executive Suite Hotel, the official hotel for Heartbeat Alaska. When you come to Anchorage, please stop in and say hello. Thank you for sponsoring us, Executive Suite Hotel. And now let's take a look at how Native Americans, Alaska Natives, are participating in resource management with Keepers of the Circle. Across the wide expanse of Mother Earth, so many things meet our eyes. The eagle above to protect us. The deer whose velvet brings with it a new season. The buffalo that walks beneath the silent sky. The fish whose journey is part of our journey. The water whose pureness reminds us of what can be. The mountains whose shoulders are around us like brothers. And our spirit, the way within us that can let us know more of the wisdom all around us. Let our hearts and hands work to come to know our many blessings and protect them for our children yet to come. We are the keepers of the circle. We are all part of a sacred circle that is very important and central to our existence and to the lives of all of the creatures and other natural resources here on Mother Earth. The Native American Fish and Wildlife Society and its many members are dedicated to being ongoing keepers of the circle. The society was begun in recognition of the importance and respect accorded to fish and wildlife resources by all Native American peoples and of the need for a national organization to aid in the development and protection of all these resources. 
one of the elders has said, there are many laws of nature. One of them is to keep things pure, especially the water. One of the first laws of life is to keep the water pure. If we destroy the water, we are destroying life itself. Here on the shores of the Penobscot River in the northeast region, Penobscot people have lived since time immemorial. We have used this river here as a highway and as a resource for fishing and traveling to our hunting territories. Today we have conservation and management programs that are here to ensure that this river and its beauty will be here for future generations. In the vast swamplands of the southeast, Water is a critical element in sustaining both the habitat and the wildlife that's found here. Dedicated teams of research specialists often spend countless hours evaluating these resources and any changes in this aquatic environment that may be taking place. Ultimately, prudent decisions must be made to preserve the valuable resources like these stands of cypress and other vegetation that is critical to sustaining life here in the Everglades. The alligators that were once threatened now exist in good numbers thanks to the efforts of dedicated individuals. The existence of herons, egrets, and other wading birds are good indicators of the fact that the water continues to be productive. Of all the resources we have on this uh, Mother Earth, water is the one our most valuable. And uh, we have to take care of it. And uh, the way our water is here on the Fort Hall Indian Reservation, as you can see, this beautiful water in back of me, it's all coming from one, one big spring. And uh, even though we have our mountains, we do have water coming from our mountains. Uh, but we're concerned about the quality of the water, and everyone should be. And I think that's one of the reasons why our, our people have been working to get all of the uh, habitat fixed up, the banks restored. And as our elders used to tell us all the time, if we take care of our Mother Earth, Mother Earth will take care of us. In the Southwest, where water is often a very precious commodity, water is being used here to rear a new generation of fish that will be released into reservation waters. The fishery resource has always been a vital part of life in Native American cultures in various regions of the country. Historically, these resources were almost unlimited. Fishing has always been a way of life for many of our people. The use of nets is another important way of getting fish for our people. Hard work and long hours are involved in repairing these nets for the coming season. Many species of fish can provide a valuable source of food for the long winter. Here in the north, nets will be set to catch the salmon runs. Everything that we did was according to the, to the seasons, and, and the salmon season was very important among this. And there were times when our people had to go through a starving time because there was not enough fish caught. And so our, our children and everybody learned not to, to, not to expect too much fish because of the starving times. And they were, the dried fish was given to them by the width of their hand. That was how much they were allowed for a day. The width of the hand of a child and of the baby baby's little hand, the mother would sit and chew the fish up and then pop it in its mouth. And then the, the man of the family would get more fish because his hand was broader. And with these hands, fishermen sewed up holes in the nets so they'd be ready for the salmon runs in the weeks to come. The nets of large commercial fishing operations also harvest a portion of the fishery resource on a continuing basis. 
Managing the harvest of these fish is very important because there must be a balance achieved between commercial fishing, sport fishing, and subsistence fishing by our native people who depend on this resource. For many years, the waters of the upper Great Lakes have provided an abundance of fish. Fishing these waters has been a traditional source of work for many of the tribes in this region. During the 1960s, various tribes were pressured out of commercial fishing by various new state regulations. Once the tribes had confirmed their right to fish in ceded waters through court cases, they began to work with state and federal governments in managing the fishery. This work was done out of a concern for conservation. In 1985, an agreement was signed to allocate and regulate this fishery. Today, the activities of the Chippewa Ottawa Treaty Fishery Management Authority reflect the efforts of all the tribes in this region as they care for the resources of Mother Earth and a lasting tribal homeland. On our lands, hunting is another inherent right that is now protected by various treaties and court decisions. The moose here in northern Maine is a valuable and sought after food source. Paintings, legends, and stories from our elders talk of the moose hunts from long ago. Great beasts that were tracked in the deep snow by our grandfathers. In the far north, traditional hunting has included a great many things. These historic pictures show how the true meaning of subsistence comes alive in remote areas of Alaska where an entire village must work together to get and share its food. Even today, the techniques haven't changed, and the circle of life remains in place. In the weeks to come, this giant catch will be shared throughout the village. Here in southeast Alaska and throughout Alaska, subsistence is the very essence of who we are as Native people. It's the very tapestry of how we fit in to our culture. It's who we stand for. Subsistence is much more than food. It's, um, it's how we relate to the land and to the animals and to our resources. It's how we listen to that heartbeat of Mother Earth. It's how we relate to our children and our grandchildren and our elders. It's how we communicate and provide food and all the clothing and things that mean so much to us as Native people. And it's the very essence of how we continue the culture and our livelihood. And we are determined to do that here in Alaska. We are still on our land and we are determined to maintain our cultures and keep them intact as they have been for thousands of years. The traditional way of life includes many crafts and skills. These men are fitting a skin covering to a boat that will be used in another hunting season. A new pack basket is being made the same way as it always has been here in New England. This type of basket and many other styles are often used for gathering traditional foods. In the northern Great Lakes, native wild rice, or manamon, has served as a staple food to many of the indigenous peoples. The Chippewa consider manamon to be the spirit food of their diets. It is considered a sacred food and is an essential part of community feasts. Many of the shallow lakes and wetlands that support the wild rice beds have been drained. Pollution, power boats, and non-traditional management have been devastating to the crop. All the little kids, the old grandpas and grandmas, the whole town was out here. Tribal conservation programs are trying to reverse this situation. The programs include monitoring waters which produce the harvest. Tribal governments have set up rules to ensure an ecologically sound harvest 
and are attempting to educate their counterparts to bring back this critical resource region-wide. Ooh, isn't that right? Oh. Falling like rain today. All these efforts are designed to make sure that generations to come will be able to share in this important resource. The gathering of berries is another part of the traditional way of life. In subsistence areas, these berries are still a valuable part of the native diet and are considered a delicacy by many village people. Grandmothers, mothers, and daughters all work together in a type of social setting and talk with each other about this year's crop from Mother Earth and how it will be used. I'll be back with more of Keepers of the Circle in just a moment. But first, the 10th National Native American Environmental Awareness Summer Youth Practicum begins July 22nd through August 1st. The program provides an academic experience in a mountain youth camp. Students participate in classroom sessions, field education, recreational activities, and field trips at the Mount Evans Outdoor Education Lab in Evergreen, Colorado. The practicum is open to incoming 10th to 12th grade Native students who are interested in the preservation, protection, and enhancement of natural resources. If you're interested, please give them a call at area code 303-466-1725. Their website is www.nafws.org. Applications must be postmarked by April 28th, and that's coming up real soon. There are many things important to our Indian people here on the Colville Reservation. Among them, the salmon, the fish, and the deer meat, the elk. These are very important to our younger children. We pay highest respect to our young children and our elders. A resident fish substitution hatchery was constructed on the Colville Reservation in the uh, late 1980s. Uh, the hatchery uh, entirely is a resident fish program facility. It raises uh, rainbow trout, brook trout, and cutthroat trout that are outplanted into the uh, inland waters within the bounds of the reservation and the adjacent boundary waters. One every hour, which is about 11 or 12 feedings per day. The DO right now on tank number seven is down to 6.15. Okay, I'll make a note of that. The purpose of this program is not only to supplement fish in tributaries of the Clearwater River, but also to provide a harvest of spring Chinook salmon that the tribe, the Nez Perce tribe, has relied on in the past, and we hope in the future to provide some portion of that original run returning to these streams. I think they've put on quite a bit of weight since last week. Across the lands of native people, our Mother Earth listens to many voices. Uh, all of America uh, tends to look towards American Indians when they talk about conservation and about uh, preserving the environment and about um, um, uh, keeping uh, animals on this earth forever for grandchildren to uh, be able to experience and enjoy. It seems to me that the traditional culture, cultural involvement of American Indians is really the soul of what uh, the American Indian Fish and Wildlife Society is all about. Very close to the center of our soul is the importance of training and educating our young people. The society continues to provide these opportunities through a series of youth practicums and conferences. These students have an opportunity to work with resource managers who are tribal members from other parts of the country. And they learn more about themselves in the process. I know with wildlife, they take um, age samples. We do the same thing with fish. All of our Various federal and state agencies cooperate with these programs by providing leadership in a variety of field experiences and classes that give the students more of a working knowledge of resource management. 
An afternoon spent catching and classifying fish in a mountain stream can teach students respect for all of the creatures around them. Well, a person gets one feather each achievement that he does. Like I worked on education here on the reservation, that's one. I didn't get 20 or 30, but just one for doing all that work for five or six years. The knowledge learned from elders travels with young people wherever they go. Get-togethers like these are special times. I think it's going to be real, real important. It's, it's an important step right now. And what I would like to see is expand this to where we cover the whole United States or the whole Indian country where kids that are coming out of high school give this, get this opportunity to at least look at parts of, of a wildlife management career. I think it's, it's a great opportunity and I hope we can carry this message on further and further from here on. A great deal of our hope for the future lies with our young people. We've been taught by our elders that there's so many things that are important that we have to protect our Mother Earth. Our Indian people are very dependent on the birds, the animals, the fish. And so we as managers of lands for our Indian people, we have to be good stewards of the land. We have to learn how to manage holistically. That means that we've got to be keepers of the circle. Taking a part in the management of wildlife resources is essential for native peoples around the world. In Russia, in Providenia on the Chukotka Peninsula, the native men routinely venture out into the Bering Sea in hunt of whales and walrus. These whales and walrus are essential to the subsistence foods of the native people of Russia. So why is it important that Alaska Natives be counted? Census 2000 is almost here. In fact, the first person in the United States to be counted will be in Unalakleet on January 20th. Everyone needs to participate, especially in Alaska, and most importantly, in rural Alaska. Congress, state and federal agencies use census data to fund programs such as housing, health, education, and many other vital services. So what do we lose if I don't get counted? Even if a few persons in your community don't participate, your community could see drastically reduced services. In the 1990 census, 11,000 Alaskans were not counted. What this meant for the state for one year is $17.6 million of reduced services. Let's make sure this doesn't happen again. a new segment on Heartbeat Alaska called This Generation. This segment is dedicated to our youth and today we're proud to introduce Mandy and Jesse Estes, two talented young Inupiaq girls who have moved across America to the state of Maine, a state where residents are now discovering the Alaska treasure in their midst. Two native girls dedicated to pursuing excellence through song a pursuit that began at a very young age. Yeah, we started singing when we were about eight, listening to country music, just singing whatever was on the radio. And when we moved to Maine, we won our school talent show. And we started singing for our church. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. And we are go about to enter into a competition. It's a fine arts competition, a fine arts competition at our competition. church. And if you are 
um, viewed as either good, um, really good, or superior. And if you get superior, you get to go to Orlando, Florida, and um, comp compete in the nationals. Yeah, and, that's our goal. And if you win that, then you're going to make a CD a Christian. Mandy CD. and Jesse Estes have high aspirations and high ideals. Their lifestyle is and always has been alcohol and drug free. And though Maine is a beautiful state, they still love Alaska the best. I really like Maine. It's kind of like Alaska in a lot of ways. The weather is pretty much the same. They want a pretty lake. Thank my sponsors of Heartbeat Alaska once again. We sure appreciate all of you. And speaking of sponsors, when you come to town, stay at Executive Suite Hotel. And when you do, you'll receive one of these Heartbeat Alaska hats. It says Heartbeat Alaska on the front and Executive Suite Hotel on the back. Thank you, Executive Suite Hotel, for those fabulous hats. We like to see them all over the state. God bless every single one of you for joining me. Join me again next week for more Native News. I'm Jeannie Green. We'll see you then. Fall into the bed of faith prepared for me. I will.